Hey everyone, my name is Eleanor, and the readings I looked at are chapters 8 and 9 from the book The Sex, Which Is Not One. Chapter 8 is entitled Women on the Market. Chapter 9 is entitled Commodities Among Themselves, each written by Luce Irigari. While Eric Garry was born in Belgium, she is considered to be a French philosopher. She is trained in the Lacanian school of thought and was highly regarded until the publication of her book, Speculum. Her book criticized Lacanian philosophy and caused her to be ostracized as well as expelled from her teaching post. Her broad educational background influences her works in that there are three main strands to her insights, psychoanalysis, philosophy, and linguistics. These two chapters analyze the role of women in society through the lens of Karl Marx and Claude Levi Strauss, who she refers to as the anthropologist in chapter 8. Chapter 9 is a look at Freud within the context of the homosexual world she introduces in chapter 8. We have three basic concepts. One, women are commodities, the definition provided by Marx. Two, women have three roles in society. And three, we live in a male-dominated homosexual world. All right, so let's get into chapter eight, women on the market. So the quote I chose is actually the first line of chapter eight. The society we know, our own culture, is based upon the exchange of women. Without the exchange of women, we are told we would fall back into the anarchy. Hmm. Hmm? of the natural world, the randomness of the animal kingdom. I really like this because she is kind of being playful here, even though we do know that this quote is 100% what's going on in the world today and has been going on for centuries. The, parent the parenthetical question marks are almost asking, like, do we really believe this? And... We know that people do, and how is this a thing? I think that this is a really good way to open up the piece, which is probably why she decided to put this as the first line of her chapter. Um, but it really does bring up the question that we have of women as commodities, and to be more precise, women as scarce commodities. Is our society really so fragile that if we were to treat women as humans, that we would completely devolve into chaos? It's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. It's, like I said before, it's pretty playful. And I just, I just appreciated how she started this whole chapter and conversation off with Almost a smack in the face to say, no, not at all. The next quote I wanted to take a look at comes a bit after she introduces her, her points in conjunction with Karl Marx and Levi Strauss. The exchange value of two signs, two commodities, two women is a representation of the needs desired of consumer exchanger subjects. In no way is this the property of the signs, articles, women themselves. At most, the commodities, or rather the relationship among them, are the material alibi for the desire for relations among men. To this end, the commodity is disinvested of its body and reclothed in a form that makes it suitable for the exchange among men. So in this quote, we can see the collaboration between the past philosophical thought and Igaré's point, bringing to our attention the parallels in thought and exactly how previous thinking is related to the status and commodification of women. I really thought that this quote led really nicely into her ideas on the three separate roles of women, which I'm going to get a little bit more into in the next slide. All right, 
So Igeche has already said that women possess value as determined by men and what they can do for men. She gets a little bit more specific when she talks about the three separate roles of women. We have the mother, the virgin, and the prostitute. So the mother represents productive nature and is subject to the control of the father, marked by his name and living within his house. So the mother is, I, I feel, just kind of like this entity that has been bought to say that like, oh, I have one of those for coming from the man's perspective. So moving into the virgin, who is pure exchange value. She has no existence of her own. And she is merely an envelope of possibility as determined by men. It should be noted that the virgin only has value until her envelope is opened, her hymen is broken, at which time she turns into the prostitute. And the prostitute is, uh, is an interesting concept because she has both exchange value and use value in so much that her use is that she is exchanged. A prostitute is, it is, it is in the prostitute's nature to be used up, uh, making her an object for exchange. Um, when I was reading this, it, it made more sense to me when I thought, I thought of the prostitute in the context of the more she is used, the less human she becomes and more of an object she is. Okay, so we are going to quickly move into chapter nine, commodities among themselves. In this chapter, Igache is really looking at Freud's thoughts on masculinity and homosexuality and how, they, how his ideas kind of coincide with hers in so much that she believes that our society is, is based on homosexuality. Okay, so the quote that I chose for chapter nine is, this means that the very possibility of a sociocultural order requires homosexuality as its organizing principle. Heterosexuality is nothing but the assignment of economic rules. There are producer subjects and agents of exchange, male, on the one hand, productive earth and commodities, female, on the other. Erigare said in the previous chapter that we live in a homosexual society. And in chapter 9, she continues to explain this concept as well as looking at Freud's interpretation of female homosexuality as it is the desire of the woman to be male. So within this chapter, she does go a little bit more in depth about what exactly she means by the homosexual society. But I really did appreciate her analysis and incorporation of Freud's thought when looking at female homosexuality. And um, I do have to say that I thought that it was kind of funny when she's talking about Freud's theories as just that, like, well, women want to be men. And when they stand up for themselves, that's them trying to, to become man. So... So we should just deal with it that way. And even in lesbian relationships, we see a, a masculine presenting woman and a feminine presenting woman. There is never going to be, you can't see my air quotes, but I have air quotes around the going to be um, a purely female homosexual relationship that, that does not have this desire to be male. Okay, um, that's the end of my presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. Um, I'll see you in the discussion board. Bye!